What's your must-have plugin? Probably Serum, Arcade, or RC20. I wouldn't say Beef. Just I've had placements with him in the past, and the way he did business about it just made me not really fuck with him like that. What's up, Jay Garduza? How you doing? All right, later, 80 beats.
hi hats many years easier? Yeah. I mean, obviously. <laughs> I just feel like there's really no sense of writing out the hi hat pattern every time. Me, eh, don't really feel like it's necessary. I've done it so many times in the past. It's like I'd rather just drag in a midi now. It's too easy. Yeah, this from the it's too easy kit. He did make a drum kit.
so far no spiders today. Do I only use the wave supply drum kits? Uh, mostly. For the most part. Comethazine on this? Nah, don't disrespect this beat, bro. for Comethazine too much to be honest and there's a reason we have history I wouldn't say beef, just I've had placements with him in the past and the way he did business about it just made me not really fuck with him like that.
know who Jason Joshua is, man, to be honest. I'm just using the limiter, that's it. Just isotope ozone five, just using the limiter and setting the setting the gain and stuff how I want it. No, the go-to kick is this, I just named it that for my kit, it's not the same one as that. Who are hearing this? Man, I don't even know. Someone said Megan the Stallion, so. I added in those claps and then ran with it. try a different bounce on the kicks but I think I had to like play it
I swear I put a new 808 in there. It's not there. Did I put it in the wrong kit? Hmm. Did I put it in? No, it don't freeze on me now. Don't freeze on me now. Day created. Did put them in the wrong kit. I did. What's up, Haru? What's your must have plugin? Mm, probably Serum. Arcade or RC20.
F sharp instead of F? Let's see. You're right.
Uh, intro is usually eight bars. Wait, I'm tripping. Because it's in uh, double time. Or it's in uh, half time, I mean. So it's actually four. Because instead of each one of these being one bar, two of them actually equals one bar. So it's actually one, two, three, four bars. Because a bar is like one, two, three, four, one bar. One, two, three, four, two bar. One, two, three, four, three bar. One, two, three, four, four bar. That's how you count it out. And if it was double time, then it'll go one, two, three, four, one, two, three. You see what I'm saying? So it's actually four. Even though it says eight, it's because we're at the BPM of 168. We are actually doing half time tempo. If we were doing full time tempo, our clap would be like this. Um, see what I'm saying? Clap would be like this. That's the actual tempo of 168. Like that's a normal tempo. So the fact that our clap is going like this means that we're actually in halftime as far as the drums. So therefore, four bar intro, four bar, eight bar hook, and then 12 bar verse if you count the pre-chorus as part of the verse, which you usually do. Because technically it is, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Yeah. bar piano loop no nah, I would say it's it's perfect honestly or not long enough one of the two you know um, if you're just doing a piano loop I would do like 16 bars at least Sixteen, but at halftime. Yeah, so it's this long. That's pretty good as long as there's an A and B part. Like, that's that's fine. The the only thing is like, then there's no variation in the loop for them to use for like the verse and you know what I'm saying if you're just doing a an eight bar or as you're saying sixteen but eight bar and halftime loop, then you know there's a section that's kind of chill and there's a section that's kind of crazier usually one part you can use for the hook one part you can use for the verse but it's nice to have a few more like variations like 16 bars even half time you see what I'm saying at least four different kind of sections so that they can chop one for the intro you know use one for the chorus and the hook whatever you want to call it and then you know one for the verse at least so I would try to make that 16 in half time so FL would say it's 32. Henry, what's up? You said, hey Casey, how's it going? My least favorite part of making beats is adding transitions. I hate that shit so much. Reverse crashes, FX impacts. Um, yeah, man, I feel like I was struggling with that for a while too, but I just needed to find some new sounds. And I ended up finding a bunch. Uh, and one time I even found a bunch on Splice. 
Splice is a good place to get like risers and stuff like that. And then really just don't overthink it. I just really use a small riser like I'm using in this one. I like to set it to two bars. And sorry, yeah, two, yeah, two bars. Because you know it's once again it's counting this as normal speed, so this is two bars. And then I just like to you know add it like this. Don't overthink it too much. It's really not that important. And it's muted. My bad. <laughs> I mean, that's really the extent of what I do. I don't really overthink it. So. Just try to find some good um, sounds to use, short ones. Don't use super long ones. Just try to find medium or shorter length ones. And um, yeah. The most frustrating part of making beats is getting it mixed well, too much back and forth from the studio to the car. Yeah, but that's the thing. Once you do that enough, you start to kind of learn your setup and just keep doing that, man, because you'll eventually dial it in to where you'll like start to nail it. You'll take it from the studio to the car and be like, oh, it's perfect. You know, and then that's really valuable. That's how I learned to mix really well. Then once I just knew, like with my current speaker setup, how it was going to sound in the car, then I knew like what to do. I didn't have to take it to the car anymore. I just knew it was going to hit in the car, you know. So that's just, that's a good way to learn how to mix well. Um, granted, I mean, your car might not sound great. And it may be giving you a false sense of mixing, you know what I mean? But it's just a good test, you know, if you listen to songs you like and they sound good in your car. To compare your mix to that is a good um, place to start. But uh, yeah, after you kind of get comfortable and dialed in with your own setup, you can kind of stop having to do that. And now I just know how to mix. I don't have to take it to the car and listen. I just know, like, I've learned the method for me that works where I don't really have to go test it. The 808 is the worst for me, but I've definitely learned a lot of what you've said just from doing it. The 808s, the biggest trick I found is to mix them lower in the car because I would take my mix to the car and the 808 would always drown out all the other instruments or it would just sound too loud and distorted. So I finally learned to just turn my 808 down in the mix and I ended up finding that sweet spot of where it bangs in the car and it's not turned up as loud as you would think. You can make various versions. Yeah, what I used to do was I would take you know, a mix, I would mix it, I would take it to the car, I would open my notes app while I listened to the beat and I would write down things that I heard that were wrong. Then I would come in, look at the notes, fix the things that I wrote down, and then rebalance it, go back out and do the same thing again. A lot of times it'd be like um a lot of times it'd be like, Oh, turn the snare down and then I'd come in and I turn the snare down and then I rebounce it, I go back out to the car and then it'd be like, Oh, now the snare's too quiet, you know what I mean? So you just kind of find those things from doing it, but it's a good method. Like, I like it. You have R type type R sub in the back. I'm not really familiar with what that is. 15 type R, but just be careful that it's not giving you a false sense of um, bass presence. You know. Supreme.
yeah, texture mix is everywhere. For me, you know, the car is just where I felt comfortable knowing, like, I know, like, other songs sound good in my car when I'm driving around playing them. You know, they bump a certain way to where it makes me feel a certain way, like, oh, I like this, you know? So I just kind of learned how to replicate that with my beats. Um, but definitely test it on different mediums. Like, so I would always use, like, headphones and go listen on, like, Apple. It was before AirPods came out when I was really, like, learning this stuff. So it was like, go listen in the Apple EarPods. Not AirPods, EarPods, you know what I mean? Just, like, plug them in to your phone and listen. But those, I feel like you can never really get those to sound too good. They always sound kind of eh. But it's just a good reference point. Another one done, let's go. He's awesome in terms of melody. Yeah, melodies are tough, man. It's hard to make shit that sounds good, you know? Like, especially when you're like me and you're using loops 70% of the time. It's hard to make a melody myself that sounds as good as, like, some people's loops. And that's kind of a reason why I stick to using mostly loops is because there's people that are just loop makers. They don't make anything to do with drums. They just dedicate their entire craft to making loops. And obviously that equals better loops. Me, I'm more on the drum side of things, finishing the beat, mixing the beat. You know what I mean? So my focus and all my time doesn't go into making loops. So therefore, I'm not as good at it. And so I kind of just like to think of it like there's different jobs in music creation. You know what I mean? Some people their purpose is just to be a professional loop maker and make really good melodies and they don't do drums they just send out their melodies and then people like me use them you know what i mean i feel like there's a place for those type of people um it's kind of like i guess an analogy would be like doctors like you could go to like a general doctor but if you have a heart condition you're going to want to go to the heart specialist you know there's a purpose for every there's a job for that so that's why I've just I like using loops because there's hella talented people that can make really really good loops you pair them up with someone like me boom it's a hit you know because I can take the loop turn it into a full track make it you know make the drums really good I can mix it really good and I can turn it into a completed beat that I can present to an artist so it's you know it's like a perfect pairing so that's my focus and that's what I like to do so Therefore, I'm not as good at making melodies. This is, is what it is. You know what I mean? So, um, but it, that's not to say I never do. Sometimes I do. I just don't make that my entire focus. I'm trying to go into this particular lane. This is what I'm good at. I'm leaning into what I'm good at. And that's worked for me. So, but there's a lot of people that are just loop makers and they get placements and plaques and lots of money and they're just really 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 fucking good loop makers man and they don't ever have to lay down a single 808 they don't ever have to lay down a single drum and they are just multi-platinum you know it's 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 a great lane to choose man it's a great lane how do I get in the scene with loops? Because I can't really hit up artists with just loops. Well, two points to that. One, you shouldn't be focused to wanting to get stuff to artists because you're a loop maker. You, your focus is producers. Your focus shouldn't be to get loops to artists. Your focus should be getting loops to other producers because they're going to be your means to a, a placement. They're going to be your primary focus if you're trying to make loops. So. So you should be focused on making uh, connections with other producers who can get you, like people like me, that, you know, do what I do on a beat. That's your focus. So getting in with a other producers is really the goal. But I will say the second point of that is a lot of artists only like to record on loops. So there, you know, there is a possibility that there's some artists that you could just send 
loops to. It's rare. And most of the time, it's going to be the producers that are the type of producers that are actually in the studio with the artists that are going to be playing your loops. So once again, it circles back through to you should just network with producers and send all your loops to the right producers. Take someone like Des Wright. If you're not familiar with Des Wright, he's a fire sample maker, loop maker. Bro, he's got like multiple Drake placements, Travis Scott placements, Young Doug. He's been on, on like every major album because he just built himself up to a point where he sends all these major producers like the Metro Boomin and OZ and all these people. He sends his loops to them and he has such good loops that they use it and then he gets placements and he's on every major, you know what I mean? So you become like him where you work your way up through all these levels and so you get to a point where the major major producers who are actually getting placements consistently are using your stuff that's the key that should be your focus so it's just networking um you know and at first you're just going to send them to any producer and you said but i feel like as a small loop maker another producer would just make a beat with my loop make a song with it and will never hit you up nah See, that's the thing. Like, when you create a loop, that is your composition. If they do that, you have a say in a portion of that publishing, of that credit, of that royalty. You have that. No matter what. If the song comes out and it's your loop, you can get your credit. You can get your due with it. So don't even stress about that. Send your loop. If you're a loop maker and you're trying to, like, just be a loop maker and put all your focus in that send your loops out to any producer and i don't mean spam stop pause don't go and just send it out to everyone don't steal emails don't do all no i'm saying build up your network of producers who say yo send me loops yo send me loops yo send me loops build that up one at a time maybe i'm one of the people and I say, yo, send me loops. Boom. Guess what? Now you got my email in your email list. Build an email list, basically. And, you know, send out weeklies or send out monthlies of your loops. And just build that list. Maybe your list only has five people at first. Then it only has five people first. Just keep growing it. You meet someone new. You network with someone new. Someone else hits you up and says, send me your loops. Boom. Keep Just keep building that list. His name is Des Wright. I'm gonna type it in the chat. I've seen some shady things in history where certain producers did not give credit to loot makers and end up getting zero from the song. I mean, that would never happen to me because I would fight that. And you know, I'm blessed to have a good management and lawyer, but if that ever happens to you, go find an entertainment lawyer because you gotta understand here, just, just stop, just stop and think about the actual thought process behind these entertainment lawyers, right? If they help you get your percentage on the song, guess what? They get a cut. Guess what? Now they get a plaque. Guess what? Now they get percentage on that song because they helped you. So it's in their best interest to help you. You're not going to have to pay them a bunch of money. They're going to help you in exchange for they get their lawyer fee. They get their cut of the song. Every placement I get, every plaque I get, my lawyer gets a plaque. My lawyer gets 5% of that advance. That's his payment for being my lawyer. So if you say you get a big placement and your loop was used in a Drake song, it's not going to be hard for you to reach out to an entertainment lawyer and say, hey, I have this Drake song, it's my loop, and, you know, they didn't credit me. Now this dude's going to, he's looking at you like an opportunity to get a Drake place. you know what I mean? So it's like, you scratch his back, you scratch yours type of thing. It's, they're not going to be like, sorry, you're too small. I'm not going to help, bro. They're going to, it's sad to say, but they're going to, you know, I don't know all the entertainment lawyers out there, but some of them, you know, they're looking for clout too. They're looking for, they're looking for their placements. They're looking for plaques to hang in their lawyer office. If you reach out to one of them, they're going to help you, bro. So just think about it from their perspective. So if that ever happens to you, reach out to an entertainment lawyer. What's that one dude? His name's Adam. My lawyer's Navarro. He's a really good, uh, really good lawyer. Like, 
There's lots of them out there. Adam Freeman or whatever. Reach out to that dude. Hit him up. DM him. Say, yo, I didn't get my credit on this placement. Can you help me? That's that's what I would do. As long as you can prove you made the loop, you have a case. And nine times out of ten, they're going to be able to help you. Because labels don't fuck around with stuff like that. They don't want to get sued because they didn't clear a loop. So you're pretty protected. So that being said, build your email list, your weekly list, and send your shit out, bro. Don't worry about people using it or stealing it. Bro, if you get a placement with it, that's a blessing. Even if you didn't know about it. Even if they stole it. It's going to equal a placement for you and then open a door for more opportunities. So build your list. Send out your stuff if that's what you want to do. It's a great lane to be in, man. Be a loop maker. trying to get like a baseline down and then I'm gonna build upon that idea.
trying to think how I want it to go. Ladies open. Me, see, I'm not so good at making melodies like this. When I play it, like on the piano, I struggle with that. I think I'm better at making melodies when I click stuff in. Whoever said finding the sound is the hardest part of making a melody, that's 100% facts.
free. Hold on, I like these chords I did. So the chords are, let's see if I, maybe I can replay it better. So. It's not really working out, but see you, Santana.
Please.